There's been a lot of talk on X and on the internet in general about why Tesla is not using their new Phoenix radar for much of anything yet, even though it's already built into several models of their vehicles. Plus, we have more evidence about what OpenAI has been up to with their QSTAR algorithm. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am going to start very quickly by taking a quick dive into QSTAR once again. I know I just talked about it. I'm going to have to do another video on it once I've had a chance to digest this more, but this is really interesting. Stephen McAleer, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, said, we invented QSTAR first. So as, as is not surprising at all, there are always researchers out there from UC Irvine and the University of South Carolina who worked on something called QSTAR. And this relates back to ASTAR. I'm actually going to look at ASTAR first. ASTAR is an algorithm that's been around for machine learning for forever and like I said in yesterday's video you probably are using a variant of it when you do a Google Maps search or something it's it's a way of finding out the least cost way of getting from one place to another and that could be physically like you know like in maps things or it could be more along the lines of a least cost type of path through a game or through some sort of economic turmoil whatever you can define it the way you want to but essentially it depends on heuristics so human beings come up with a cost function in other words this little red guy is trying to get to this green guy and if it hits a black thing that's like a, a major cost right so that's like it's impossible to go through there but what you want to do is find out the most efficient way to get from the red dot to the green dot and so with a star you define the cost of moving your little marker whatever it is like this red guy from here to here or here to here or something along those lines so you define that cost and then you create a metric that tells you how far apart these things are in this case it's pretty obvious you could say what is the linear distance between these two things or you could do what's called a Manhattan distance distance which is basically how many squares apart are you anyway this is up to humans to decide humans come up with heuristics that define the cost of every single move and how far apart these things are in some sort of solution space and a star utilizes that to determine what the best path forward is to get from your beginning point to your ending point point. and so that brings us to augustine Eliot all's paper here a star search without expansions learning heuristic functions with deep q networks so this is really interesting because heuristics and deep neural networks have generally been at odds with each other and this is a way of trying to recombine them and i think a uh, probably a very, very good idea. And obviously if OpenAI has taken this and run with it and has come up with something that might be AGI or at least closer to that, it obviously has some advantages. So with a neural network, the, the traditional way to do it is you get rid of heuristics, you get rid of human knowledge, you just feed data to the neural network and you just say, here's all this data, you figure out what's going on. The basic idea here is that it sounds like what they've done is that they've utilized a combination of heuristics and the traditional deep neural networks in order to get something that functions more rapidly, is more compute efficient, and can come up with better solutions quicker than the older version. So by all means, feel free to, you know, pause this video and look at the abstract if you want to, but I'm just going to turn to the last couple sentences here. Furthermore, QSTAR search is up to 129 times faster and generates up to 1288 times fewer nodes than a star search, which means it's better than a traditional heuristic search, which is reasonable because that's the whole reason why we use neural networks and stuff. And then finally, although obtaining admissible heuristic functions from deep neural networks is an ongoing area of research, in other words, it's an unsolved problem. If you can figure that stuff out, they prove that QSTAR search is guaranteed to find a shortest path given a heuristic function that neither overestimates the cost of the shortest path, in other words, from place to place, nor underestimates the transition cost, in other words, from one square to another. So that's a pretty impressive statement and proof, and this is really interesting stuff. I've been very interested in the combination of heuristics and deep neural networks myself, but had not come across this before, so super cool, and thanks to Adrian Dittman for pointing this out because I would not have seen it otherwise. So anyway, like I said, I'm going to digest this further and do another video that completely goes into this in more detail, but I thought it was worth bringing up since it's part of this conversation and could be leading OpenAI to believing that they're very, very close to artificial general intelligence. You might have noticed I am a big fan of t-shirts, and today I'm very excited to share these awesome t-shirts from this video sponsor, Into the AM. These shirts are exceptionally high-quality shirts that have been fitted just right for your body. 
And if you get any of their many, many graphic tees, you can really express a mood, start a conversation, or of course, just have a bunch of fun. Just look at their reviews. They have about 10,000 reviews with an average of 4.8 out of five stars. These shirts feel fantastic. And as you can see, they're a great way to express yourself too. And just for you, Into the AM is giving you 10% off your purchase. If you go to intotheam.com slash Dr. Know It All, or click the link in the description. Want this Saturn return tea? How about this electric escape tea? Or this tree of knowledge tea? Or even this awesome Sasquatch backpacking tea? These and many more graphic and plain teas are online for you to choose from. Don't forget to use my link intotheam.com slash Dr. Know It All or click the link in the description. Grab yourself some fun, amazing quality shirts and get 10% off. Thanks again to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to it. All right, and on to radar and Tesla. So as you might or might not know, Tesla had radar low definition radar in their vehicles and remove them in 2021, I believe. <laughs> it was around the time of the chip shortage. I might be off by a year. It might have actually been as early as 2020. But anyway, they removed radar and Andre Carpathy and others who were working there at the time said that it was a big deal. They realized how much of a crutch radar had been. But since then, Tesla has developed their own hardware for radar. Well, it's not hardware for, but it's its own radar unit. And it's called Phoenix. And it's a high definition radar, which means it can resolve a lot of things. So low D radar, one of the problems with it is, is that it shoots out rays, right? You know, it's, it's shooting out radar. And let's say something bounces off of a bridge. That's a flat horizontal thing across your field of view. That registers a zero you know, speed. And so you're like, okay, that's a zero speed, but where is it in space? We don't know exactly because radar is not that specific. It's kind of specific, but not that specific. The other option would be, and so you don't want to stop in that case, right? You'd want to ignore that because you're going to go under it. The other option is that there is a semi truck that is just right in front of you that's pulled across the road and is not moving either. And low definition radar has a very difficult time judging between bridge and truck. And you definitely want to stop if you see a truck. You definitely don't want to stop if you see a bridge. So this was a significant problem and getting rid of low D radar was a big step forward. It actually was a big step backwards in Tesla's full self-driving ability, but then they had to solve for this using only vision and they ended up with a substantially better situation than they had before. Meaning that full self-driving became much more robust by not using radar because they weren't leaning on it as a crutch and also they didn't have sensor fusion issues. In other words, they didn't have vision saying one thing like, something's there, you need to break for it, and the radar saying like, no, 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 there's not. Those two things, the fusion issue is a significant problem. It's not just an engineering problem, it's a really, really fundamental problem that is, is you know, significant enough that Tesla felt the need to discard radar and start over again and look at it. And it's another reason why Tesla doesn't use LiDAR. LiDAR is also very expensive and fragile, and there's a bunch of problems with it, but there's also the sensor fusion issue with LiDAR as well. So Tesla has made very, very definite steps. Their full self-driving team has very, very carefully worked to avoid needing either radar or LiDAR and now ultrasonic sensors in their vehicles at all and relying only on vision because that gives you one source of information and you don't have sensor fusion issues. But then of course, as we can see from this February 17th article, they reintroduced this radar, this Phoenix radar, and I believe it's currently in all the models Model S and Model X vehicles, although I might be wrong about that, and I don't believe it's in any Model Y or Model 3s. I, you know, again, it, it, they never really tell you, so they might be in there and they might not be. But as far as we know, or at least as far as I know, they're putting this into their Model S and Model X, but not their Model 3 and Model Y. And people are like, why aren't they using it? So it's in there, but they're not util utilizing it. So it's just sort of there taking up space. And people are asking the question, why aren't they using this? Well, the logical answer to this and something that Tesla has given us hints is actually the case is that this radar is like the cherry on top of the cake or something. Maybe you could call it something like that. In other words, they could utilize this under some very, very severe circumstances like very heavy fog, very heavy rain, very heavy snow, super pitch dark night where there's no lights around or any of that kind of stuff. These are relatively rare circumstances if you think about it. And the vision system already works reasonably well under those circumstances. But this is a place where having active radar shooting out beams in the front under those very specific circumstances could help the car drive more safely. And if you're saying though, but why wouldn't we have that in there all the time and be utilizing it all the time? You've got that sensor fusion issue. So you, even if you have radar, you don't really want to turn it 
on unless it's an extreme instance where you really can't see well with these cameras. And remember that these cameras can see better than the human eye. They're, they're much more dark sensitive than we are. So they can see things that are very, very dark. Yes, they can't see through fog and stuff, right? So that is a problem. But what they've discovered with version 12 of the full self-driving, which is an end-to-end -end version of the neural network, in other words, photons in, controls out, is that the vehicles from learning from human data, you know, the way people drive is that people tend to slow down when it's foggy or when there's heavy rain or when it's super, super dark at night or any of those kinds of circumstances. So what they're saying is that actually the cars have learned to drive effectively without radar anyway. They drive like humans. We don't have radar. If it's super foggy outside, you just don't go barreling down the highway at 70 miles an hour. You slow down to maybe 50 or something to give yourself more buffer because you don't have that much vision in front of you and you can't see the car that's, you know, maybe five, 50 or 100 meters in front of you, you better slow down because otherwise you're just going to come barreling through and like hit something at very high speed if you can't see that. So in other words, humans already have to slow down under these circumstances and the vehicles in the end-to-end -end training have learned to do the same thing already. So they already have kind of a safety buffer. Uh, if you've driven full self-driving, even version 11, you'll see oftentimes that the speed limit will actually become limited. I think a little bit over conservatively, but if it starts to rain and let's say it's a 65 mile an hour zone that you're in, it will actually drop the speed down to 60 and then maybe 55. And it'll say because of the weather conditions, it's lowering the max speed. So already in the training and the way that the full self-driving works, it's taking account of the fact that you have to drive slower under these conditions. Now, will radar eventually be a nice addition to this to have on top? Yeah, absolutely it will be. But the logical answer answer here, and again, what we have seen hints from from Tesla, is that they'll add this back in only after the car basically drives perfectly without it. So in other words, the thing that works great, it's already 10 times safer than a human driver, it's working fantastic, and now we'll add the radar back on under only specific circumstances. When the car detects that there's heavy fog, or the car detects that there's a blizzard outside or something, then it will kick in the radar, and it will use that as an extra bit of, you know, confidence-inspiring information. It's not like it needs it needs it, it just will help it to be just that much safer. So that is, I believe, the way that Tesla is going to head with this. Of course, this is all my speculation, so take it with a grain of salt if you want. But anyway, I think that the Model S and Model X, for all we know, they may actually be testing this out in shadow mode, which is where the car makes decisions and it doesn't actually drive the car at that point. The human is driving it, but it's thinking about what it would do. And so they may be using that in kind of an experimental mode. The high definition radar is actually pretty good, right? It's not that big thing where you can't see a bridge from a truck. It's much, the resolution is much, much higher. And so you can see smaller objects. So it doesn't have the same problem that the original low definition radar had, but it still isn't as accurate as vision. So under most circumstances, you really don't want to deal with radar, but under very specific ones, you might want to have that. And so again, what I think they're probably doing right now is running that stuff and taking a look at the data that they're getting, maybe driving it in shadow mode, maybe just collecting data out of the Model S and Model X. And if they have it in some Model Ys and Model 3s, then maybe they're collecting that data as well. And that at some point, after they've basically solved full self-driving, then they will go in and turn it on for the user so that the users feel more confidence and the car has more confidence under, again, those very specific circumstances, heavy rain, fog, dark, super, super dark night, blizzard, that kind of a thing. And so in my mind, that is the reason why they haven't activated the hardware in the vehicles that have them at this point. They're just collecting data. They don't want to confuse the issue. They, they don't want to go back to leaning on the radar as a crutch. They want to solve the whole thing with vision, just like humans do, and then add in that one extra layer, that cherry on top of the cake at the very end of things. So all in all, very interesting developments. The whole thing about QSTAR is fascinating. And again, a little bit scary if they've made that much progress progress if OpenAI has. And as far as the radar is concerned, again, it's being built in. Yes, it is much, much better than the original low definition radar, but there are reasons, very, very good reasons for Tesla to be delaying enabling them, even in cars that have them at this point. And of course, this is just my thoughts on the matter. If you have very different take, let me know in the comments. Be constructive about it, please. But definitely let me know in the comments what you think. And also, while you're down there, please be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my ex-subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. And if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool 
cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, a really big thanks once again to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video with these awesome shirts. Be sure to check out my link in the description and get 10% off your order. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.